Good morning, South Bay. I'm your host, Michelle Murad. It is so nice to see you again. I hope everyone has had a great week so far and is ready for an awesome weekend. So let's get into what's going on in the South Bay and the extended surrounding communities. Thanks to the drought and water shortage, officials announced on Tuesday that Manhattan Beach is now limiting watering to three days a week. Over the last three years, water supplies have continued to be impacted by the combination of high temperatures and below average precipitation. Currently, and I didn't even know this, 96% of the city's water supply is imported from Northern California and the Colorado River. The three-day watering rule has been made in effect to conserve the water and help the shortage. Beach Life Festival coming soon! Beach Life Festival returns to Redondo Beach this weekend with performances from the Smashing Pumpkins, Weezer, 311, the Steve Miller Band, Cheryl Crow, and many other amazing major artists. The festival starts this Friday and will feature music, art, and culinary experiences at the waterfront in Redondo Beach, May 13th to the 15th. Beach Eats returns to Marina Del Rey starting this Thursday, bringing in some of the most unique and popular local food trucks to Marina Del Rey all summer long. I hope you're hungry. Check out the food trucks and enjoy the gorgeous sunsets and ocean breeze each Thursday from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. starting May 12th to October 27th at 14101 Panaway Marina Del Rey. Um, some of the places are Stop By Cafe, which is Asian Fusion, Roll and Lobster Seafood, I'm getting hungry just saying this, Wise Barbecue, Barbecue, The Surfer Taco, Mexican, Scooter's Italian Ice Dessert, oh my gosh, you're missing out if you don't check that out. Love the name of this next place, and I'm sure the coffee will make you feel this way. Reborn Coffee at Manhattan Village Shopping Center Plaza had its grand opening on Saturday, May 7th. The celebration included with a Manhattan Beach chamber ribbon cutting and giveaway prizes. Make sure to stop by and grab some coffee and get reborn again. <laughs> On a more serious note, the Santa Monica homelessness crisis has prompted a new wave of programs and services. While the homeless population has decreased by 11% since the last count in 2020, there is no doubt that homelessness and related crime and drug uses continue to be a pressing issue in the city. The programs will continue to help with included licensed mental health professionals, um, housing case managers, substance use abuse specialists, medical providers, psychiatrists, and appear with experience. Let's continue to help those around us and put homelessness to an end. Okay, it's time to clean up so you can do your part by joining the Manhattan Beach Pier cleanup happening May 14th from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome here and here is the schedule. 9.30 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. There's a kickoff and a morning brief to get you ready. 9.45 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. There's a service at the beach. 10.15 um, to 11.15, collect trash and sort. And then 11.15 to 12.30, education, brief and closing remarks. And thanks for doing your part to make our city look so beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, Long Beach has a plan to increase groundwater supply. A Long Beach injected well design is in hopes to bring water back into the groundwater basin beneath Long Beach. The groundbreaking took place last week at the Water Replenishment District's Advanced Water Treatment Facility. The goal is to create purified recycled water. Recycled water is already used for irrigation and other forms to form a barrier against salt water so it won't get into the groundwater basin. This well will be paid for grants from the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and the other from PepsiCo for $1.5 million. Wow. It's time to stamp out hunger. Stamp out hunger resumes this weekend throughout Santa Monica. Postal carriers will be delivering more than just mail this weekend. They will be picking up donated food for the annual stamp out hunger drive. The annual food drive collects donations for Santa Monica based West Side Food Bank. If you'd like to donate to Stamp Out Hunger, go to NALC.org. Parents are hunting for baby food as nationwide shortage hits the U.S. Parents across the U.S. are scrambling to find baby formula because there has been a massive safety recall, recalling many leading brands off the store shelves. The recall is in thanks to Abbott, which was forced to shutter its largest U.S. formula manufacturing plants in February due to contamination concerns. Pediatricians and health workers are urging parents who can't find formula to contact food banks or doctor's offices. This recall is especially dangerous for infants who require special formulas due to food allergies, 
digestive problems, and other conditions. Hopefully, this matter will clear up soon. 15 South Coast Plaza's Top Chefs present benefit for culinary students on June 5th. Top Chef runner-up Amar Santana, chef owner of VK and Broadway, and Tony Ensalt, chef of Michelin Star Restaurant, Knife Pleat, have gathered an all-star lineup of the South Coast Plaza Shopping Center's chefs to serve dinner benefiting culinary students. Santana and Ensalt will prepare a four-course meal with wine pairings as one of the many events celebrating South Coast Plaza's 55th anniversary. The evening is called the OC Chefs. The next generation benefits CCAP, the Careers Through Culinary Arts Program. The nonprofit provides culinary job and life skills for over 20,000 middle and high school students in seven regions across the U.S. New York City, Newark, Philadelphia, Camden, Chicago, LA, DC, Maryland, Virginia, including seven Navajo reservation schools. And Santana won his first scholarship through the program as a teen and spent two weeks at Le Cordon Bleu in London and, as history would have it, become a top chef. People are getting highly excited about Long Beach. Long Beach is allowing eight more cannabis dispensaries. The Long Beach City Council will approve eight new licenses for cannabis dispensaries, but it will make people wait another week until amendments are made to help applicants ready, waiting for their chances to be selected. City cannabis business regulations expect that the eight applicants could be selected by November. It would likely then take them one to three years for them to actually open for business. The eight licenses that have been reserved for equity business owners that have lower net worths, whose family have been affected by the war on drugs or who meet other metrics outlined in the city's cannabis equity program. The city program has sought to introduce more people of color and less wealthy business operators into the industry by helping them monetarily through grants and guidance through the application and permitting process. Next up, Blessing of the Hands ceremony honors nurses, which we should all do. Nurses received a special recognition of one of their most important tools at Providence St. Joseph Hospital in Orange County this past Wednesday. The caregiver's hands were anointed with oil to emphasize the importance of physical touch and healing. This week is National Nurses Week and nurses around California are being thanked for their loving service, especially during the pandemic. I have to say, especially for my family, thank you nurses and if you know a nurse, make sure you thank them personally. Whose family have been affected by the war on drugs or who meet other metrics outlined in the city's cannabis equity program. The city program has sought to introduce more people of color and less wealthy business operators into the industry by helping them monetarily through grants and guidance through the application and permitting process. Next up, Blessing of the Hands ceremony honors nurses which we should all do, nurses received a special recognition of one of their most important tools at Providence St. Joseph Hospital in Orange County this past Wednesday. The caregiver's hands were anointed with oil to emphasize the importance of physical touch and healing. This week is National Nurses Week and nurses around California are being thanked for their loving service, especially during the pandemic. I have to say, especially for my family. Thank you nurses, and if you know a nurse, make sure you thank them personally. you I have Alana Glenarski who is not only a, a coach but she's also an instructor a dancer through social dance right social, social partner dance. dance that's right um, and she's also born in the Ukraine immigrant to the United States Absolutely. and just like a woman of many many gifts and talents which many women are Right? That's a really good point. And it's so true, nice to have you true. at South Bay TV. Thank you so much. I'm so so happy to be here because South Bay is my home. And uh, my home 
away from home, away from home. you know. And I've been here for many, many years. So yeah. a lot, most of the things I do actually are located in South Bay. So um, I think it's great to share with the community. Oh, well, we're so happy that you're sharing with the community. And I'm so happy that you're here. You look fabulous in thank the blue. You. I know thank you're you, representing you. the Ukraine. That's right. <laughs> but right? it looks amazing on you. But now everybody knows the colors. Yes, right? finally. We all should. We all should know the colors of, of everywhere in the world. And it's so great to have you here. I want to know what brought you to dance. What was it that great, drew great you? Did you know as a little kid that like this was something that sparked joy in your life? It's a great question. Thank I you. actually grew up um, in Kiev, Ukraine, yes, and I was actually um, studying to be a concert pianist or oh, wow. a pianist. So you are a woman of the talents. <laughs> well, you know, I have to tell you, I think growing up in the, in the Soviet Union, at that time it was the Soviet Union, um, many children were involved in arts. It totally was just part of our upbringing. So That's it so wasn't funny. as unique as it sounds, but yes, that was my um, kind of my gift, my, you know, what I enjoyed. And I studied for, you know, many years. And then, of course, we immigrated. So I initially thought I was just going to be whether, um, you know, a music teacher or, or a pianist or whatever, you know, dancing was not necessarily the primary focus. However, before I left Kiev, this is a, actually interesting, before I left Kiev, I had an opportunity to study how to accompany the number one Ukrainian folk troupe that is very, like, world-renowned. Actually, right. when people think of all the crazy dances where people, like, leap, you know, men are leaping over, like, this... Uh, <laughs> that's the truth that's actually most known is called the Virsky Ensemble. And I actually got a chance as a kid to study how to accompany a dance class wow. for this group. So I was like enamored, like how watching. How old you were you when you were watching this? I was, uh, I, I left when I was 16 and a half. So it was around 15 and a half or so I was um, that age. And so that was the first time I was exposed to like really amazing professionals. Amazing. And of course that was also Ukrainian folk dancing. So I had that experience, and I didn't even realize that that wasn't just fun. It was something that impacted me, actually. Wow. And so dance became something I was like, just it was mesmerizing to wow. see people work as hard as these people That's did so cool. and learn how to accompany them um, and how to play piano, like when they do their warm-ups and, and uh, ballet uh, classes. That was a great experience. Uh, I'm grateful for that. Now... It took years and years and years and a lot of life before I fell into dance. And that was actually when I turned 33. Oh, really? Yes. And, and I tur turned 33 and my life was extremely, extremely difficult at that time. I went through a very difficult divorce and I lost my mom at the same time. Oof, that's so dance saved me. Ah. Dance actually saved me, literally. And I'm not exaggerating. My first dance class was taken at South Bay Adult School. Oh, wow. So um, it was actually a mixed dance class. In fact, but I, I want to just say this to everyone. I mean, yes, if you please. guys are sitting on a couch, I mean, there's South Bay Belt School. There's a uh, rec department. All these amazing, very well-priced classes that you mm -hmm. can learn and enjoy so much. Yes. And it may change your life like it changed mine. That's amazing. So um, I never thought it was going to become my career. It was just something that literally made me feel so happy and so alive after many years of being very unhappy and, and like literally frozen, kind of like feeling frozen. So it was myself kind of, you know, healing process. I thank you for that and sharing your story, um, part of your story, because uh, I know there's more to it. But just you even talking about it, I could feel like the the joy and the impact that dance absolutely even like the, through that pain I felt that immediately too that that dance saved you and, 100% and I think that's so incredible how things like there's a saying at least my mom would say this that when things are falling apart at least when we think they're falling apart they're actually falling into place I love that. That's and actually great. That's a beautiful way of looking at it. I'm getting really. chills just even thinking totally. about that. I, I am with you. I am with you. What about that? I'm because it's you. almost as if like the world is shaking things up to put them like exactly where, where things need, need to be. fall. And so so you took your first dance class at okay. 33, you were mesmerized and you were like, This is it. This is for me. Well, I just I just knew that I was so happy. I it, it made me feel so alive. And so, like, it, it 
transports you into a different world and you forget everything you're going through. Don't you love that? <laughs> don't you and love that? True. And you don't have to drink or take drugs. Yes! I you love just that. Dance. Just dance. You I, know what I mean? I mean, I... <laughs> So. I'm I'm such a big dancer myself, so like I oh. love I love hearing about this and love hearing about your your connectivity to the dance and, and the joy behind it. So okay, so yes, there's no drugs involved, although some people probably do like no judgment. whatever, no, no judgment, judgment, no judgment. We're here I'm to just, talk about I, dance. I'm just saying we're here to talk about dance. <laughs> it's one way of actually, you know, finding a place where you belong, yes. where you could feel alive, where you're fully present. I mean, it combines everything. It combines mindfulness. It combines social skills. It combines sometimes you find relationships. My husband used to be my student. Oh, I love that. Please. It's a secret. Keep that a secret. Wait, keep wait. No, no. Secret. We can't keep that a secret. We got it. That's amazing. Anyway. So, so you, you went through this divorce, you lost yes. your mom, losing a mom is the was really is difficult. the worst thing in the entire world, it's right. the worst. Uh, but so you found dance, and now you become a dance teacher, and yeah, and you find your husband, or he finds you. It, it, we actually, <laughs> and this happened to Saturday Dance right? School. I really am grateful for being able we to do people. so. <laughs> So um, yeah, he, he became a friend and he was one of my students and honestly was just the most organic kind of a, a very unexpected thing that developed from it. And yeah, we've been together for 12 years. Amazing. Yes. I love that you're, fo you're following your joy and then it brought you even right. more joy without even looking for it. It just came into your life. And... I mean, I'm actually kind of speechless because I love it. I almost want your husband here for this interview because that is so cute. to be in the front of the public. <laughs> that's okay. So that's okay. I'll, I'll find him somehow and be like, oh, it's so nice to meet your wife. No kidding. I won't, I won't, I won't harass it's your husband. It's filming when he finds out. I'll share <laughs> no, that. No, it's, it's a beautiful story yeah. and it's all about finding your joy and, and sharing joy and like you were saying, like connecting with other people. And I know that you have an event that connects other people That's for right. a long amount of time. Tell That's me right. about this. That's it's, right. it's the Tango Marathon. Is this right? Yeah, it's an early summer Tango Marathon. Um, it is something that came about at the time where LA uh, at that moment uh, was maybe eight, eight, well, now we have to subtract two years of okay, yes. pandemic. We did have to subtract two years. Yes. <laughs> kind of lost that yeah. time. Okay. But um, there was no big event uh, that was like sort of international event in LA. And LA is such an incredible city. I mean, look outside your window. So I mean, it's so gorgeous. We live in such a beautiful, gorgeous city that has really so much... Do to offer yeah. and so not to have a big event where people can fly in and really enjoy the city was just kind of like just wrong and so because I used to have um, and I still do monthly um, social dance events called Milonga Milonga LAX is my um, another baby and so <laughs> that was happening every month and so people would come to me and say like why don't you do a festival and I'd go like go away <laughs> do not talk to me because I know exactly how much work that was and I said no a few, few years in a row. And then I finally was like, yeah, they're right. They're right. I mean, we need something. Yeah. So I, I finally said yes and decided to go for uh, Tango Marathon format. It's a different And it's on the beach, from, right? So some of it happens on the beach. Some of it happens indoors. It's not just on the beach. I just want to be How clear. many hours is this marathon? So up to this year, I was 35 hours of dancing. But the same person, can you switch? Oh, you switch all the time. That's the best part. That's I the best part. This. this is great for anyone who's single oh, no. or looking to mingle. <laughs> and dance. Just looking to or dance. have a good time. Friends. Yes, or meet new friends. My crew friends from all over the world. It's oh, the wow. best way to make friends because when you travel and you go to different right. places you go to their tango events you can stay with them you know you you can always like have oh, a community cool. anywhere in the world because you share the same passion for the same thing and you share the same language with the dance absolutely that's correct and it is a language How yes. do you know that? I, I listen i love to dance so i get it i speak language. your language i speak your language so what year did you start this 
Okay, so this is going to be number seven, and that's so that's nine years ago okay. because we had right. to because of, close down and it. shut down for two years. That must fact, have been hard. I was really worried that Tango is not going to come back because right. Tango requires really close embrace and like being almost next to each other's face, right? So <laughs> a lot of Tango people no, were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not how I met him. Sorry, 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 sorry. Even your student. Just kidding. I'm just sorry. I'm going. I'm having too much fun with you. She's okay. Fun. I'm having too much no, fun. No, okay. and I'm not taking. Remember, I told you I don't take anything personal. personal. Which is such an amazing quality. I take things way too personally. So I'm learning from you in many ways, and I appreciate um, that. So yeah, so it's back. Thankfully, it's back, and people are really excited because we are obviously not. Um, not hugging people, not being around people was really like we were all feeling deprived because in Argentine tango um, world, people are really close together. And this is not because they're dancing with intimate um, uh, romantic partners. This is the, something that majority of people do not know. Mm -hmm. That social partner dance is not about just dancing with your romantic partner. The beauty of social partner dance is that you get to dance with everyone. So it's a that. community building thing. Yes, it's lovely. Great. That's why I love it so much. So how many people are coming this, this go around? So um, we usually have around uh, like so every night there mm -hmm. is a big event, and so I'm just counting. And when does at it home. start? It starts on the 26th of May, okay. and it ends on the 30th, which is a Memorial Day okay. itself, and it ends with the dance or the party at the beach where we dance, literally right north of Manhattan Beach Pier. If anybody wants to come yes. and check us out, we're gonna do tango right there, like How fun. halfway in the water. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Halfway really in the beautiful. what? It's so cool. <laughs> It's so cool because people from all over come to LA and they love it so much. Even when it's cold, yeah, they want to be halfway in the water. Yeah, we don't. Yes, but they do. I don't. But, <laughs> but if I'm dancing with someone, yeah. I might yeah. actually want to. It sounds like exactly. you need to make a movie about this. This is like very, really? or maybe it's in the cards. Oh, okay. Let me think about that. Like yes. anytime somebody says that, I'm like, mm, let me pick it. I know a writer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so okay, so it's yeah. May 26. Uh, yeah. Where can people go to sign up if they haven't signed up yet? So this particular event is um, geared towards people who already know some tango. Okay. okay. However, the beauty of our event that's unique is that we actually have outdoor events that okay. are part of this okay. thing um, and anyone can join. So we have a bonfire mixer at Duckweller Beach oh, uh, wow. in El Segundo, which everybody is welcome, and we bring musical instruments and we so dance fun. and we do like our smiles, and everybody is welcome to join. Um, we do flash mobs, so this is really what? cool. I know I do this. <laughs> you are so I funny. love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. A um, flash oh, mob you. is the really fun but very unpredictable thing because we don't usually do flash mob with like permits. We just show up oh, and we even dance. Better. How could anyone turn away people that are dancing? Very seldom we do get little really? attitude here and there, like Beverly Hills. Of course. Right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> We've done it all. Beverly Hills. We have danced, um, you know, in Hollywood in front of the you know, Chinese theater, oh, in the so mall there. Cool. We have danced in front of LACMA. We have danced oh, in, front in, of the lights? The, in front of the lights. Wow. We have taken people to um, the Getty Museum. We danced on the premises of the Getty Museum. Amazing. Nobody, nobody gets this. us out. Is there social media that we can see? All yeah, of we this? have a video of all of that. Oh, I didn't see this. I'm going to send it to you. Please. Yeah, so, yeah. so what's the, it's what's a the lot social of media? Living Tango. If living you just tango. remember Living Tango, you can find me by Living Tango on YouTube. There's videos there. You can find my website, livingtango.com. Okay. Um, LA Tango Marathon is easy to remember. That's another URL you can yeah. find. And there's videos everywhere because we capture everything. Yes, I saw the video for the so marathon. It looks so cool. We so don't have fun. that much time with That's you okay. left. It's okay. But the time that we do I'm have... I'm so happy you let me share that. I am so happy you. that you're here and sharing that. It's, it's so lovely to meet you and talk with you. What would you say to someone who is terrified to dance? Ah... Uh, 
They're afraid to try Excuses, it. Excuses, you know. <laughs> Excuses. The best way to live your life is to face a little fear every day. Like whatever is uncomfortable, you've got to like challenge yourself and, and face it. And you will find out that behind that little door that's called fear, sometimes there is a discovery that you can do things you've never thought you were able to do. I've been teaching people who are double amputees. I mean, there's really no excuse for not doing the best you can. You don't have to be a star. You don't have to be on Dancing with the Stars. You can just do it for yourself. You can do it in your living room. So just show up. That's it. Just show up. Alana, it was an absolute pleasure you. meeting you and talking with same, you and hearing here. about dance and how it has changed your life and inspired others and so many, I'm sure, that are coming for the marathon. Go to livingtango.com tango. right. for more information. We were so lucky to have you. Thank, Thank you, you for so being much here. for letting me share. This of is course. something I love to share with Hopefully everyone. Hopefully you'll so. come back. I will. <laughs> and uh, we'll dance. Maybe we'll learn to dance with you. That would be fun. That would be fun. We need to open up some yes. space well, and we'll we're done. probably dance on the beach. We wouldn't Sounds do it good. here. Sounds good. Uh, thanks Thank for you so watching. much for having me. Of course. Thank you. We can either design houses from architecture plans uh, from the ground up, or we can remodel certain spaces, just a kitchen, just a bathroom, or a full scope remodel. What comes out is an end result that's beyond what my client had even hoped was possible for themselves. Here with the lovely Jenna Gaday from the Picnic Chick. How are you, Jenna? I'm great. How are you? I'm so great. It's so nice to have you here. Welcome to South Bay TV. Um, so you're kind of like a unicorn. Like, <laughs> how does this? Is, I'm so blown away by what you do. Uh, tell me how the Picnic Chick started. Of course. So I launched my business in September of 2020 in COVID. Um, the whole goal was to buy a car. I was 16 at the time and you know COVID shut everything down so we brought celebrations outdoors as it was a safe environment to mm -hmm. be in and I just was thought I was going to do it for a couple months just to get some money in my pocket to buy a car and once I started it started rolling off the bat in December and ever since then I've been doing picnics since December of 2020. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Thank you. Your motivation was to buy a car, and now you're like a CEO of like a crazy business that's like yeah. taking off. Uh huh. Um, I was just on her Instagram story. So with the Instagram is at the picnic. So it's um, at the dot picnic dot chick. Okay, at the dot picnic dot chick. Yeah. I say that like five times fast. Um, so I was just on her Instagram stories and saw this amazing. Um, picnic spread that you put together and you said it was for a shoot? Yeah, so um, there's a new business in the area. It's called the Classy Castle LA and they do the white bounce houses that are super trendy right now. So we did a Mother's Day themed picnic as well as um, an Easter themed kids picnic. Amazing. So I guess the real question, and I'm sure you already have the answer for this, did you make it to buy a car? Yes, I bought a car <laughs> within um, four months oh my in God. December, so I bought it in March. This yeah. is why you're a unicorn. <laughs> this is incredible. So tell me, okay, where were you and what day like was it during COVID where you were like, I have a really great idea for... So in August... This is August um, 2020? Yeah, okay. August 2020, we uh, went to San Diego for my Who's grandpa's we? birthday, my family okay, and I and it. my grandparents. And he was like, I'm not going to go eat in a restaurant right now because of COVID. So we were like, what if we did a picnic on the beach? So we got like a cute big picnic blanket with the chairs, the umbrellas, the balloons. And it turned out super cute. And mom was like, I think you could maybe do this down in South Bay and make it a business. And I kind of doubted her. And I was like, mm, no, this is weird. I don't think anybody's going to buy this. And apparently, I know, I was, I kind of was like, no, I'm not doing this. So my mom really pushed me to do this. She's like, I think mom, like, this is going to be good. So yeah. I did it and I had no idea that it would turn into such a South Bay hit. Are your 
parents just like blown away or oh, yeah. family members blown away so this was done for your grandfather to mm -hmm. have a picnic outside and safely yes i love that and i love your motivation behind that i think that is so cool so what kind of can we ask what kind of yeah absolutely i bought a toyota forerunner just Cute. like i'm super outdoorsy i love the outdoors obviously because of picnics um so i'm able to fit everything in my car with a lot of trunk space but i'm also able to like go camping and off-roading so I amazing. get best of both worlds amazing yeah. okay so my question to you is when you were a little 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 one did you like making picnics like would you pretend to put out picnics like so I think like the picnic thing just started like re when I launched them um, that was the idea but I think I was always into like being extra you know mm -hmm. dressing mm -hmm. up I just loved elevating spaces and like giving back to people and serving them I guess it's just so such awesome. a beautiful gift to do that is a beautiful gift to do and <laughs> speaking of beautiful I think you have something that you brought with you what is what is can you tell us about yeah this? so this is just a dried flower arrangement from my florist that I'm partnered with and then this who are you just, partnered with it uh, she's called florals by Sophia florals by Sophia and is she in Manhattan Beach she is in Torrance she's in Torrance yeah so she delivers the flowers to me and then this is made by um, glam celebrations it's okay. like a flower pick that I can put in my flowers and wow yeah <laughs> amazing okay all right so you you had this idea you wanted to buy a car you want to have a picnic with your grandfather outside. You did that. You do manage to get the car. How did people start to find you? Was it all through Instagram? How did you just like explode? How did that? Yeah. Happen? So honestly, I personally have no idea, but I worked really, really hard to promote by word of mouth. When I first started, I would go out um, like twice a weekend and I would set up at like a busy area like the park or on the cliffs and PV and I would just stand in front of my picnic and hand out business cards and tell people my story I'm like hi I'm 16 this is my business <laughs> and I kind of did that but awesome. it was really slow until December and I did a lot of get free giveaways just <laughs> to get people to book a picnic and then from then I think it was just mostly word of mouth and recommendations from people in the South Bay Wow. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you. It's really, really cool. And then, um, and then with the florist and the other person that you partnered up with to do that really cool um, setup. How did they find you? Was that through Instagram or is that through word yeah. of mouth? Like so, um, it was like the Sophia the florist was mm -hmm. from a friend of a friend, mm -hmm. and she reached out to me on Instagram, and we did our first like partnership, and when I maybe in January, and. Ever since then, we've been partners since the beginning. Amazing. She's amazing. <laughs> I love this so much. Okay, so what would you say to aspiring business owners or people that have an idea? Like, what what should they do? Yeah. It seems like you're just killing it. Thank you. You're welcome. So I think it's just a matter of keeping one foot in front of the other and not looking back. So when I first launched, like I said, I didn't have picnics for three months until December. And I was so, so, so close to giving up because I was like, I'm doing all this work. I'm not getting any bookings. So I just kept going. I kept walking, not looking back and just moving forward with motivation. And I think age like does not matter. You don't, no matter how young or how old you are, just do it. If you yes. have the idea or the thought, or just snaps. do it. We're yes. gonna snaps for that. I love just exactly what it. you said. <laughs> yes, just do it. Just go for that dream. Whatever brings you joy and Clearly, like, I love that you're doing something that is with, like, you asked yourself, like, what can I do to serve others? And yeah. I feel like so oftentimes when we're stuck in a me mindset, we get closed off. But if you think, like, bigger picture, there's so much more that you can do as yes. you're doing with your amazing business. It is so cool. Like, are your friends just, like, taken aback by how Oh, cool yeah. Is? They they call me. They don't even call me Jenna. They call me the picnic chick. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, I need to make a business. You're so awesome. You are so yes. awesome. <laughs> Where did the name come from? So I did a lot of name picking. Like, I was the first, first name? It was Pretty Picnics. Um, That's pretty I, accurate too. Yeah, pretty picnic. Mm -hmm. Very aesthetic, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, it just doesn't stick. But for a while, my logo was pretty picnics, and I don't know where the picnic chick came from. But one day I was like, hmm, the picnic chick. I 
think that's what I want. Like, that's a perfect name. It says it right there. It's perfect. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Oprah is going to call you one day. <laughs> Maybe like having like a beautiful picnic in her Montecito home. I totally see that. Are you kidding? Maybe one day. I'm sure. I'm sure as your Instagram grows and like every, like I mean you just and you're so lovely to talk to and like the aesthetics is they're just so beautiful and and the story is amazing. I I mean we're like I don't even want to ask this question because I just see it blowing up for you. But like where do you see yourself in the next? like five years I mean this is yeah all so new but like it seems like it's moving at lightning speeds so that is a really tricky question because I am graduating high school yes. this year and I just turned 18 congratulations so the future is a big scary thing but um, like I said I'm keeping one foot in front of the other and I'm just keep going as long as I can um, I'm definitely getting more into event planning and events and it's such a beautiful thing to create something in your mind and make it come to life and that's my favorite part is just seeing the pro like the after product and I don't know I hope to keep continuing the picnic chick and get into events and yeah live the legacy <laughs> I definitely think that's gonna happen and congratulations on graduating and getting through COVID and creating a business through COVID at 16 that's kind of amazing thank you as I'm sure everyone has already told you that because it's <laughs> pretty amazing and impressive um i just i'm so excited for you and for your journey and and everything that you've said is just it's so true like one foot in front of the next and it doesn't matter how old you are and just to like try something and see what happens and the rest can be like the most magical experience yeah you just never know where life could go I, like I, I just I had no idea that I would be a business owner at 16 <laughs> and continuing going at still 18. I just think it's such a blessing to have in my life. That is a huge blessing and you deserve all the good that's Thank coming you. your way. You're welcome. And where can our viewers find you if they don't already if they didn't already write down the Instagram, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram at the.picnic.chick or my website is just thepicnicchick.com. ThePicnicChick.com, the dot picnic, picnic dot chick yes. at Instagram. <laughs> it took me a couple times I got it. Um, Jenna, it's so lovely having you and getting to know your story. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being our guest at South Bay TV. Uh, check out Jenna for more amazing opportunities and to book your next picnic. We will be right back. in California, earthquakes happen, unfortunately. And in order to stay on top of the earthquakes and what we need to do to be prepared for them, we have our next host, Mr. Wayne Powell, to give you all the information and guidance that you will need. Hello, South Bay. I'm Wayne Powell, and I'll be bringing you interesting stories and interviews from around the South Bay and beyond. Today, I'll be talking about the Manhattan Beach Community Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT. I co-founded the program 16 years ago, and we work with our fire department and the city, assisting when there's a major disaster, which fortunately we haven't had yet, but as we all know, the big one is yet to come. Sadly, seismologists tell us that it's not a matter of if, but when. There's also other um, disasters that are potentially likely. You know, we live very close to the airport, and also a refinery, and we can't rule out terrorism, whether it's domestic or foreign. We also assist the city at various events. We provide first aid at the various concerts that the city puts on, as well as major sporting events, like the Manhattan Beach Grand Prix and the Manhattan Beach Open Volleyball Tournament. The motto of CERT is citizens helping neighbors and our city and that's what it's all about when we do have a major emergency i believe we'll be well prepared and that's what i'm going to talk about today i'm going to talk about what you need to do as an individual to be ready because when we have a major earthquake that's not the time to be thinking about it 
So the first thing you need to have is an emergency supply kit. And you actually need to have one in your car, one in your workplace, and of course, one at home. And it's very important that you have enough food, water, and first aid supplies to last you for about a week. They used to say 72 hours was sufficient, but based on major earthquakes in Japan and elsewhere, they found that emergency first responders were overwhelmed. They also learned that ATM machines are going to be down, um, you know, computerized credit card machines are going to be down. So you need to also have some cash, small bills, because we'll be a cash economy. But going back to the kit, you need to have the fresh water and food, and you can get the dehydrated food. There's a number of sources that you can go to if you want to assemble your own kit, and there's also places where you can buy the kit. If you go to the Manhattan Beach CERT website, which is M-B-C-E-R-T, then the letter A, dot org, so that's M-B-C-E-R-T-A, dot org, there's an excellent resource that tells you everything you should have. You should also have spare batteries, and you should have one of those um, devices that stores um, you know, the battery for devices like an iPad or an iPhone, or I should say for a tablet or a cellular phone. Um, it's very important because we don't know how long the electricity is going to be out. And telecommunications will also be out or restricted. But one thing that they did learn is if cell towers are down or there's limited bandwidth, you may not be able to make a phone call on your cell phone but you can actually still send text messages because it takes less bandwidth. So that's very important to know. You should also have, if you have family outside of the state, you should have their emergency contact numbers. So that way, if your family is at various points uh, or various places, you can regroup by calling a central number. Now I'm gonna talk about um, emergencies and what we've learned from the program. The, the actual full uh, two and a half day program teaches you CPR, emergency first aid, particularly stopping the bleeding and immobilizing broken bones, um, and that's very important. We've had in our first graduating class one student that was a first responder um, he was actually driving down Manhattan Beach Boulevard and he saw an apartment fire that nobody actually had called in. No one had called 911, so that's the very first thing he did. Then he went around and got everybody out of the apartment and that also included some elderly uh, uh, residents and that was very important. So by the time the fire department showed up, um, everybody was safely evacuated. I know I used my skills, my CERT trained skills, when I was uh, first on the scene of an auto accident on the freeway and I assisted bandaging and stopping the bleeding and calming the uh, victims until um, the paramedics have, had arrived. We've also had cases where there were home accidents or work accidents and people use their first aid skills for that, you know, graduates from the class. Um, now, here's the most important thing. We've had a number of graduates that actually saved the life of a loved one, either because they had a heart attack or a stroke, because they used CPR to resuscitate the person until the paramedics ha had arrived, and that prevented um, someone from you know, becoming, unfortunately, a death st st um, statistic or to have, um, you know, brain damage. So it's very important to learn these skills. You may never need to use them, and we hope that that's the case, but we know from all of the classes that we've taught, we've had a number of our graduates that use those skills, and it's very life-saving. 
I next want to talk about the do's and don'ts during an earthquake, and that's very important. Of course, everyone knows that when an earthquake strikes, you should drop, cover, and hold on. And what that means is you want to get under a sturdy desk or a table. The reason for that is because there's going to be broken glass that's going to be flying, there's going to be lights and fixtures that may come down from the ceiling, um, or in some places ceiling tiles. There also could be heavy objects like a TV or um, a home entertainment system or things flying out of bookcases. Now for that, you should have actually all of your bookcases and TVs and other heavy objects secured to a wall so that doesn't happen. The one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to run out of a building, particularly if it's a brick building or if it has a brick facade because those bricks are going to be coming down. And there's going to be aftershocks. And so if it didn't come down originally, it may be um, that it was loosened to the point where an aftershock will bring it down. Also, there's going to be electrical wires um, and telephone poles, electrical poles, trees, and other objects that may be falling down. So, and you never know whether what you thought was the main earthquake was actually the foreshock to something even more major. Um, now, speaking about foreshocks, there's a very good app that's called um, Shake Alert. And it will give you, depending on how um, intense the shaking is, as well as where the epicenter is, how far you are from the epicenter, that could give you maybe 10 seconds to a minute or two of advance notice because it detects the P waves that precede the, the S waves, the shock waves. Now you might ask, well, what good is that? You know, if we're only talking about um, seconds. Well, that will give you enough time to get away from heavy objects, to get away from a window which may break, as well as to duck, cover, and hold on. And you can Google the app, or you could go to shakealert.org. But all of these things are very important. You should also know where your gas, water, and electrical shutoffs are, particularly the gas. But one thing that I want to emphasize, when we've had major earthquakes in the past, it was interesting because what happened was the reporter or, you know, the anchor said, well, we all know the first thing you do in an earthquake, a major earthquake, is you shut off your gas. That's the wrong answer because as we learned from the Northridge earthquake, it took days, weeks, and even months to turn the gas, to get the gas company or a, a licensed plumber to turn it back on because so many people did that. The only time you should ever turn off the gas is when you detect a gas leak. And the way you would know that is because um, natural gas is odorized. So if you smell like a sulfur or a rotten egg smell, you have a gas leak. You might also hear a hissing noise. You can also go to where your gas meter is and you'll see that the, the dial, the, the needle, will be turning probably very rapidly. Then and only then should you turn off your gas. Now, I want to talk about the gas meters as well as the water meter in case you have a water leak and even your electrical panel you should go and see where they are because when the earthquake strikes it may be dark and now or then isn't the time you want to have to be looking for it and you should also have the proper wrenches and have them stored close by so you can use those and f one final word about gas meters since we all live near the beach and there's a salty uh, oxidizing marine environment. You should go out as soon as possible and first of all make sure you have the right uh, wrench and give the 
the, about a quarter of a turn on your gas meter. You don't want to turn it off, but you just want to give it a quarter of a turn just to see if it will turn. Because what we've experienced is, again, because of the oxidation process, a lot of them are rusted solid. And so when we have the earthquake, the big one, you won't be able to turn the gas off. And if you call the gas company, they'll come out at no charge and they'll replace or repair a gas meter. So you should know that. Also, if you do have a gas leak or maybe you suspect a gas leak and it's at night, don't light a candle. And they even recommend, even if the power's on, perhaps you shouldn't flip a light switch because that could give off a spark. And if you have gas in your house, that could cause either an explosion or ignite a fire. So those are very important things. And as I always say, you know, I was an Eagle Scout, a Boy Scout, and the motto was be prepared. It's better to be safe than sorry. And, um, you know, what's amazing is when we have minor earthquakes, people will say, oh, you know, I need to have an earthquake preparedness kit, or I need to do all of the things that I said you should be doing in preparation. Well, um, they don't. And then the next minor earthquake happens, and it's the same thing. Let's hope that during our lifetime, we don't have the big one. But as Dr. Lucy Jones, the renowned seismologist says, and she continually repeats it, it's not a matter of if, but when. Um, we are going to be having the annual Great Shakeout Drill on October 20th at 10.20 a.m. And it's easy to remember. Uh, it's 10.20 at 10.20 a.m. And it'll be a simulation as if we had the big one. And there, what you want to do is practice your drop cover and hold on. And um, you know, again, all of this is just to be prepared. One thing that um, the CERT organization has is another program called Map Your Neighborhood. And what that is, is you meet with your neighbors and you get to know them. A lot of people don't even know their neighbors, even though they may live next door. Um, but you can find out, um, you know, they may be a, uh, uh, you know, a construction person or a doctor or a nurse. And that may come in very handy if someone's trapped in a building during a major earthquake. It also teaches you where to locate your gas meter, your water meter, and your electrical. Um, but the biggest thing I find out is people just love meeting their neighbors. So if for no other reason, you know, that's a good thing. I want to wrap up by talking about two programs that we have. I mentioned earlier the CERT training program, which is on a Friday evening and then all day Saturday and Sunday. And it teaches you all the things that I mentioned, especially light search and rescue and first aid. Um, we have a class coming up this weekend. Unfortunately, it's closed. Um, it's filled up. And we're planning to have another class, but a date hasn't been set. Another shorter program is the CPR and first aid class. And that's on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And here's the upcoming dates that we'll be offering that class. June 11th, October 8th, and December 3rd. And again, to enroll, you can go to the Manhattan Beach CERT website, which is mbcert, the letter A, dot org, or you can email at info at mbcert, the letter A, dot org. People ask me, what's the A for? And um, apparently someone else had mbcert plus me Manhattan Beach CERT is an association, so that's how you can remember the A. But that is probably the most important investment you can ever make. Well, this is Wayne Powell reporting for Good Morning South Bay on South Bay TV. Stay safe, be well, and have a great day.
Welcome back to Good Morning South Bay. Okay, so if you just stumbled upon this show and you're like, what is this? Hi. We are a live streaming platform reflecting the South Bay lifestyle covering cities from El Segundo to San Pedro and all the towns and cities in between. We cover topics including health and wellness, fashion and beauty, art and music, food and entertainment, and with this show, local news and events. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and our online newsletter to be notified of any new stories. And when we go live, make sure, make sure not to miss that. In the meantime, come back every Friday at 12 p.m. to stay up to date on all the latest happenings in the South Bay. Speaking of, here's what you and your family can look forward to this weekend. Pricey Digs at Shade Hotel, Manhattan Beach, Saturday, May 14th at 2 p.m. Don't forget to miss out some live music at the Shade Hotel in Manhattan Beach. Tour de Pier, downtown Manhattan Beach, Sunday, May 15th. Beach Life Festival, woo, 2022. This Sunday, May 15th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., location 239 North Harbor Drive, Redondo Beach. The Legend of Georgia McBride, Torrance Theater Company, Sunday, May 15th. Friends of Torrance Theater Company is the location and it starts at 2 p.m about this event. He's a young, he's young, he's broke, his landlord's knocking at the door and he just found out his wife is going to have a baby. To make matters even more desperate, Casey is fired from his gig as an Elvis impersonator in a rundown small town Florida bar. When the bar owner brings in a B-level drag show to replace his act, Casey finds that he has a whole lot to learn about show business and himself. It's a heartwarming, music-filled comedy full of camp, country music, and larger-than-life divas. That sounds like fun. Pete Muller and the Kindred Souls Live, Saturday, May 12th at 8 p.m. at the San Pedro Bank Lofts. The Kindred Souls bring a fresh singer-songwriter pop sound to the annex to celebrate the release of their new album, Space. Pete Muller is a Santa Barbara-based singer, songwriter, and a pianist. He has released five solo albums to date with singles reaching the top 20 on the adult contemporary chart. He also happens to be an incredibly successful businessman, mathematician, a surfer, philanthropist, and crossword puzzle designer. Is there anything this person cannot do? Influenced by Sean Colvin, Coldplay, Casey Musgrave, Springsteen, and countless others, Muller's stellar band features Missy Soltero, rounding out the band with her percussion and lead and harmony vocals. Multi-instrumentalist John Woolley on sax. He's a former member of the experimental band Estratosphere and the Jam Supergroup, Santa Cruz, Hemp All-Stars, and high-powered fiddler, singer, songwriter Aubrey Richmond, a touring and recording member of the Shooter Jennings Band, the Duff McKagan Band, and front woman to her own American Americana band, Mustangs of the West. Amazing scavenger hunt, Adventure Beverly Hills. It sounds like a movie. Los Angeles Carmen Horror Film Festival, Saturday, May 13th at 1 p.m. The Complex Theaters and Suites. Come celebrate crime and horror and film festival in Santa Monica. I mean, what a list of events. We are filled with so many wonderful opportunities here in the surrounding areas. And if you have a local story or event that you would like to tell us about, please do so. We love to hear about it on our website. Follow the link on our homepage to where you can submit your story because it's all about community and engagement and that can't happen without you. So take care of you, your town, and each other. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle Murad. Have a great day, South Bay.